It's really good to be actually to do this talk at Open Source Bridge. Um, this is our first NeoCities talk in Portland, which is we're based in Portland, uh, but this is the really really nice open source conference that uh, we you know we've kind of been reserving this talk for. We got like a couple other invites, and we were like, no, no, no Open Source Bridge, yeah. So um, can I get a quick hands for who is like who's who's not from Portland here? Who's like from out of town visiting, traveling? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so you, you hit uh, Portland on a really nice patch of weather, so that's pretty cool. Uh, for everyone else, I'm sorry about the weather. I don't know what happened. It's not my fault. Um, yeah, but it's, uh, you know, we started NeoCities about two years ago, and I've um, been coming to Open Source Bridge for a long time, and this is really a, you know, community staple. And it's actually been at the Elliott Center for pretty much the entire time I've gone to it, so um, this is a great conference. So we're working on a site called NeoCities. And um, just to give you some, a quick background, uh, I started, I moved to Portland uh, actually in the last heat wave. I don't know if you remember, it was like 106 degrees for like four days straight. I had a Corey Hart sunglasses at night record that melted in the back seat of my car, like actually melted into the car seat. I had to like pick it out. So that was like seven years ago or something like that. And um, you know, back then there really wasn't any, actually there wasn't a lot of startups in Portland at all. Um, and it was kind of like, Portland was kind of the laughing stock of tech startups actually. It was like kind of a joke to do a startup here. And um, the, the table has really changed recently and it's been really nice to see that. Um, but I've always wanted to make a startup that kind of changes the rules a little bit. Um, a startup that kind of diverges from the idea of um, the traditional business model of you know raising a bunch of venture capital money and basically just screaming 400 miles an hour straight into a wall and hoping that there's a, somebody puts a ramp in front of it in time before the company explodes in like four or five years. And um, so the NeoCities is like partially a project to try to kind of restore what I think is a major missing component of the web today. And also for us to try to build a new company model and see if we can get away with it. So uh, pretty crazy stuff and a lot to talk about. So. Um, as soon as I can figure out how to make the, <laughs> I have to go to the other screen and click on it. There it goes. Okay. Um, why the lucky stiff? Uh, I don't know if anyone knows. Uh, he was a Ruby developer, uh, really, really crazy Ruby developer, a uh, really interesting guy. And, um, you know, he really cared a lot about kind of the, the educational component of Ruby and kind of what making it fun. And um, there was always this kind of permanent anxiety between kind of the Y camp of Ruby and like the, you know, like professional businessman side of Ruby uh, that finally culminated with him kind of leaving. Uh, but I have always been enamored by this quote, which is that you, when you create, don't create things, you become defined by the taste rather than ability. Your tastes only narrow and exclude people, so create. Um, and I've taken this way farther than just code. Like, to me, this is like a life philosophy. I mean, to me, this is a way to gauge what we're doing online and see if it actually is something that is enriching our lives or if it's not. Um, so, uh, remember when everyone made websites? Okay, who, who here, like, made, uh, like, in the, like, I don't know how to ask this question. Who made a website in the 90s, right? Who made, like, a static HTML website on, like, GeoCities or Angel Fire or one of those kind of things? Wow, like, everyone here. Lycos, Angel, I don't know. There was a bunch of, I guess there was a teleport. teleport? I've never heard of teleport. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So there was a lot, right? Um, there was a lot of these sites. Uh, they were great for a while. Uh, they were, you know, most of the people in tech kind of got their feet wet this way. This is, I, I would not be a web developer today if it wasn't for GeoCities, you know. Um, and it was a really w great way for people to kind of get into coding. Um, and, you know, it was really creative and really, yeah, there were some of the sites where, you know, uh, oh, by the way, Mark Zuckerberg's first website. You ever seen this? No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a Vice reporter dug this up about four or five years ago or, or a couple years ago. Uh, it's now go gone. Uh, since the article came out, uh, like Mark Zuckerberg, like, contacted Angel Fire and, like, had them take the site down. Uh, I know, right? It's such a... No, it, I don't like it's. Not in the Wayback Machine? No, well, it is in the Wayback Machine. Actually, uh, so this, this talk, by the way, is HTML. It's a JavaScript HTML uh, slide deck, and it's, it's sitting on our blog site on NeoCity. So we're hosting our own talk with HTML, literally. And this is an iframe. Like, literally, this is loading from the Internet Archive right now. 
And, uh, but used to be able to get it from Angel Fire until that article came out, and then the site very quickly vanished. Uh, it's not a very good site. <laughs> and it's kind of, it's, you know, yeah, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm, picking, I'm picking on him. I'm picking on it. Great backgrounds, come on. I mean, it's, I, I think this is an interesting highlight because, I mean, you know, Facebook is one of the most powerful sites in the world. I mean, billions of people use Facebook now. Like, like uh, the majority of online, like, in photos go into this machine now. I mean, they're trying to replace email, you know? I mean, and it all started with a guy making this site, you know? I mean, it just gives you a perspective on, like, the way things are going online. Um, this was my first website. Uh, it was a Revenge of the Nerds fan site. Uh, <laughs> Built with a Microsoft front page. Uh, it wasn't very good, but I heard that Curtis Armstrong, who was the guy that played Booger, uh, really enjoyed the site. Somebody sent me an email and said that he, he wanted to convey that he really enjoyed the site. So I've never actually met Curtis Armstrong, but he's like a celebrity now? Because like he came back and did like a nerd-themed TV show or something? I don't know. But anyway, it wasn't very good. Uh, Victoria's site's a lot better. Uh, this is Victoria's first website. Uh, I really enjoy it, actually, still. I mean, I think this is still a reasonable site. And it has games on it, too. And we're going to play one right now. Did I do that right? Uh, I think I had to press start. Oh, <laughs> OK. Uh, OK, what's 36 divided by 4? <laughs> Nine. Nine? OK. We're running out of time? Oh, we got a lot of time. Oh, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. It's still a fun site. <laughs> still works. Still works. You know, what, 10, 12 years? Yep. <laughs> 12 years later, still works perfectly. Uh, this is the best website ever made. We did a lot of research, and we <laughs> did some kind of peer analysis and stuff, and <laughs> found this one. Wait for it. Is this even going to load? There it goes. Nice. <laughs> Enormous picture, right? It's, it's, you know, Dragon Ball Z or whatever. Great site. Yeah, so some of them look bad, right? I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Some of them didn't look very good, but you know what? They were fun. It w <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> yeah, it, it's still r like as it's an iframe, so it's it's still going. <laughs> might might just pop that up over the next thirty seconds. So just like laugh every time it does, and I'll turn it off. And but yeah, it, it's it's it was fun. I mean, we, it was fun. It was creative. You could go around and explore these sites. You know, there was it, it was it was fun. It was web surfing, right? It was actually fun to go and web surf and find random core places on the web that are kind of weird and quirky, you know? Um, now we have this. <laughs> Look what we've replaced it with. I mean, like, we, you know, uh, this is our definition of progress. We get a text box, right? And we type in 140 characters, which is, you know, a completely arbitrary piece, you know. You, know, you can type in, like, billions of characters into a NeoCity site. I mean, like, it, 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 the 140 characters is nothing. Uh, and you can't, you know, you, yeah, you can attach an image to it now. This is the this is the radical upgrade to this platform is you can put videos on it. Actually, I know the person that's working on the videos for it. Um, you know, it's fun. It, it, it's, it is what it is. It's just, it's a text box, and you really can only put so much stuff in it. You know, it's, it's, it controls what you can do with it. Um, and so, of course, because of that, everybody's profile looks exactly the same. I mean, I, I keep going back to, um, I keep going back to the notion of, um, you know, East German Stasi, like kind of like, you know, block Soviet block apartments, right? This idea of like, what's the most efficient way to block everybody into a big chunk and you end up with these, you know, kind of brutalist, I think they actually call it brutalist architecture. Um, you know, it, it's, it's with, you know, with the, with the, the leader person there, I, I should maybe I'll Photoshop Mark Zuckerberg into it later, but you know, it's, it's, it's kind of freaky. I mean, if you think about it, you know, it's like pretty much if you go to anyone's profile on Facebook, it basically looks like the same. You know, it's the same kind of structure as the same information is laid out in exactly the same way, and it's totally biased towards what a college, you know, student at Harvard would want you to see. You know, it starts with like your job and like the college you went to. You know, it's like and and, and you know what what your relationship status is. I don't know if that's like on the front page anymore, but that was like early on. That was like the big thing, right? It was the relationship status, and you know, it's it's stuff. It's not stuff. That, it's not the way I would arrange. Some uh, it's not the things that are most important to me, right? Um, and and now they're spying on us. This is the recent revelation of the last couple of years is that when everything goes through a big central system, uh, it becomes very, very easy to uh, monitor it. You know, it's like it, it, it's if you only have to tap into three or four 
systems or uh, companies to spy on every single thing on the planet Earth, well, you could, that's, it becomes pretty dystopian pretty quickly, you know? The Stasi analogy is not a terrible one. Oh yeah, uh, here's, uh, you know, here's, here's, by the way, you know, all these free services, here's what they're gonna look like in 10 years. I mean, they're free now, but they're, that what they do is they're gonna just start increasing their monetization on you and you have no control over it, you know? Uh, it's not progress to me. I've never been, I've never found the modern web to be progress. You know, I've always been kind of like, wait a minute, will we, will we have this? In fact, Twitter, I was actually, <laughs> I was offered to be Twitter employee number four. And I said, wait a minute, but, but Facebook already does this, except that they give you 420 characters. And by the way, it was 420 characters. I actually, I, I used to do Facebook development and it was exactly 420 character limit on the status updates for Facebook for like five years or something like that. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you guys interpret that want, <laughs> but, um, you know, the web used to be more creative. I mean, we used to actually have to build stuff and, and create resources and create personal sites. Uh, how can we bring that back? I mean, is it, did it die for a good reason, right? Or did it just pass out? Uh, so, you know, it didn't die for a very good reason, actually. Uh, a lot of these companies were just acquired by other companies that decided they wanted to be advertising companies, and therefore they shut the sites down. You know, Geo GeoCities was was a perfectly profitable company. Um, they just they didn't they they didn't want to they, they their margins were off, right? They said, "Oh, we can only make a hundred million dollars on this, not like five billion, so we don't care." You know, and they just shut the site down. So, we have this crazy idea. Let's bring it back. Let's bring back GeoCities. Let's bring back the idea of people giving people free website space that they can do whatever they want with. So, three big problems to solve. Uh, first, we have to bring back pay the, the like bring back the idea of free websites. We have to actually make the technology work, um, which is very hard to do because web browsers today are more like weapons than like renderers of HTML, because we can program them now. So there's a whole I'll get to it. Uh, come up with a way to not depend on advertising for to to run the site uh, because otherwise, again, we have to like start pouring advertising on people's sites, and that kind of ruins the point of entirely controlling that site, or, or, or uh, yeah, and, and what's presented on it. Uh, and make it so that the sites can't shut down if, like for example, we run out of money or something like that. You know, what happens if, if Neosity shuts down, are we just gonna be in other Geocities, right? Um, how do we make it so that the sites stay up and persist and are archived and backed up? Um, so these are all very big problems. And um, we're not, you know, we're, that's what we're trying to do is figure out how to solve all of them. And of course, each one of them is like a, kind of extreme problem in and of itself, so, um, yeah. So anyway, I started with this. Uh, this, was, this, was, this was my like bored, angry tweet from two years ago. Um, and uh, like literally just finished up at a job, or a startup in town and had some free time and was like, well, okay, what can I do now? Um, and I kind of, ru kind of rummaged on, on the original idea of, of like, you know, I really missed making websites, you know? It was fun. So I, I posted this, it exploded already, and I was like, okay, that's a good sign. It's kind of ironic, I'm using social networks to gauge the quality of a 90s throwback site or whatever, but. Uh, yeah, so a month later, I built this. Uh, this is the first version of NeoCities. Uh, just bootstrap theme, right? Uh, simple Rails backend, uh, pretty simple file scrubbing. Uh, the real secret sauce that made this work, because you're thinking like, why didn't this turn into mega upload file dump, you know, wares and viruses and, you know, Gangnam style and just explode after about 20 days, which is what everybody thought was going to happen, by the way. Um, everybody I talked to, like every engineer I talked to thought I was completely insane. They were like, you can't last two weeks with this thing. <laughs> it's a, but um, file whitelisting. So we whitelist only for files that actually are used to make websites. And it turns out that that's pretty much all you need to not make it turn into a crazy, like, virus, where is dump, or whatever. Um, so, yeah, so we launched this, and uh, it just exploded. I mean, it just, like, the day I launched it, uh, which is actually really, tr uh, I was in New York helping someone move, and it was actually hotter than it was it is here right now. Uh, and they don't have air conditioning in New York, right? It's like, you, you're carrying, it's like 150 degrees, and you're, like, carrying crap down those, like, little corridor halls and stuff, and I launched it, and then of course it just exploded right while I was moving, uh, helping helping my friend move, so yeah, that was crazy. Oh, and, and somebody, ha for the first two weeks, like there was a bug that let people override existing sites, and it, there was a lot of hacking. It was, it was pretty insane. Um, 
about a week after we launched it. In fact, yeah, I think it was like two days after we launched it. I didn't even really think that much about I mean, the thing is, I didn't think about it. It took me longer to figure out why I did this than to actually do it. Uh, we completely open sourced the site. Uh, the front end for Neocity is completely open source and available on Neocities, or on, on our GitHub account on Neocities. And uh, it's, I, I finally got a Vagrant set up, so you can actually run it now, you know, as opposed to like having to like configure a bunch of random stuff to actually get it to work at all. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I, the, 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 the big thing, the, the big, I mean, why not, you know? Uh, all the stuff under it's open source, uh, and it gives us a kind of a trustability component. You know, we can, you know, people know what we're doing. You know, if, if it, we're not, we're not dumping, you know, we're not like funneling user data into like some third party, you know, library or whatever, right? You can inspect what we do and, uh, you know, the code explains our policy. Uh, so it, it just, I think it just increases our trustability. Uh, it also, you know, makes investors want nothing to do with us, but I'll, I'll get to that. So, uh, yeah, uh, design. Uh, so it looked really bad. <laughs> and so... Yes, yeah, so when Kyle initial, uh, initially launched NeoCities, um, and I had known Kyle for like six years before that because we worked on some Ruby on Rails projects together back in the day, uh, I got really excited because I loved the idea of Geo, I loved GeoCities, and it was really sad that it had been gone for like six years. Um, so I contacted Kyle and I was like, this is awesome, but also I want to work with you on this design because I feel like it could be a lot better and that uh, I had this idea that it uh, could be a lot more than just a new GeoCities. It could be something that um, looks really friendly and encourages people who aren't technical to like try their hand at coding. Um, so yeah, this was just a bootstrap template. Kind of has like this manifesto that was like great for like the Hacker News crowd who loved this version of NeoCities. Uh, but you know, I wanted something that appealed to like people who had never touched code before, like kids. I thought of myself when I was 12 and I did my first website and I was helped by my mom who actually taught me how to do it, but like what about other kids who are like really intimidated by this? Like I want to be able to tell them like you can do this. Like code is actually not that hard to get started with. HTML is the best way to get started because it's, it's easy. It's like you know, there's like no setup um, and we like kind of show off the different sites because people are already making really cool sites. Um, and uh, so I came up with this little mascot that <laughs> I ended up using all over the site and drawing different versions of. Um, and, and it's just been a really useful kind of anchor to this idea of creating this fun and just welcoming site that is like really not intimidating because the kind of people that liked the, um, who, who actually need free web hosting are like the ones who need to not feel intimidated by a hosting site because they're usually you know people just getting started or whatever. Um, so we implemented implemented this design and launched it, and we were really excited about it. We posted this on Hacker News, and it turned out that Hacker News hated it. Uh, the kind of comments we got were, "It looks hipster. It looks like a toy," and also at least two people said that it wasn't anarchist enough. Um, so uh, I made a bonus design for the Hacker News people, the anarchist version, <laughs> where it just has the manifesto again and the two buttons to get through to what you need to do. Uh, I wanted to implement it. <laughs> but like, you know, Neo Cities isn't really about anarchism. It's about like, you know, yeah. it is about hipsters and kids and like people that may have all kinds of political opinions, not just anarchy. Um, and so we stuck to our the original design that I made, and uh, and it worked. We got we grew really quickly. We didn't even know where a lot of these people came from. There are people that are using NeoCities to teach a whole stu like classes of students like all around the world. Um, so that's been really exciting. Yeah, I want to say too, uh, the design, um, you know, I, I, whether you're a proponent of, uh, wh whether you believe in the broken window fallacy or not, uh, this design really, 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 really reduced my, like, amount of, my workload of, like, crazy problems I had to deal with. Um, there was something of a, like, a mindset change. Instead of just people posting, like, really gross offensive stuff and, like, you know, doxing sites and stuff, it, like, immediately became much nicer. 
like people actually started using the site to make pleasant things as opposed to just like scare the crap out of everybody and try to crash our, our screenshotter with like JavaScript memory bombs and stuff like that. So um, definitely like actually really clean up even just the, the sites themselves kind of it, th that visual like that perception changed right and I think that's a really good lesson for any website you know um, is, is, is that that perception does drive kind of the kind of people that use your site which is I, I had no idea I mean that was just you learned it from doing it um, this isn't nostalgia this is a big thing like that uh, this is like the kind of the biggest I mean it doesn't help that we called it neo cities <laughs> But like it, 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 the biggest like the the single biggest hurdle in is has been in, in convincing people that this is not just like oh this is where the '90s web pages go that have the under construction gifs and you know table layout and Celine Dion MIDI files and stuff right it, it, it's it, it, they can do things that social networks can't uh, so for example resource portals. Um, how many, you, does anyone here work on bikes? This is uh, this is Sheldon's Br Sheldon Brown's bike site, and this site is uh, how I I mean I, I I had an old broken uh, Schwinn uh, when I grew, grew up in Minneapolis, and I used this site to convert it to a, a single speed uh, single speed. Don't judge me. The derailleur was broken. I, it was it wasn't replaced. It wasn't fixable. I mean, it was like single speed or throw it away. So, but um, you know you can't do things like this on Facebook. You know uh, it doesn't work. Um, there's kind of some things like WordPress and all that stuff, and you can kind of do it on that, but WordPress is kind of for blogs. Uh, wikis are kind of like this. They're kind of useful for this, but they're, they kind of, I don't know, they tend to be a little Byzantine and inaccessible. Um, this, is, this lets you kind of completely create a perfect kind of resource information setup uh, for informing people on things. And um, you can't, yeah, I mean, we don't really have that. <laughs> Uh, storing individuality. Um, this is God. How do I? I mean, is this? Maybe I just wanted to put this slide in so I could show this picture because I think it's really great. You can get it in a shirt, by the way. That's that's where I got that. But I mean, yeah, I, 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 I I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a radical in this sense. Uh, that I mean, because there's some attempts for people to make their own sites that uh, then pu public better like publish to their social networks or whatever. And I'm kind of on the fence as to. Here's the thing. The thing that makes me radical is that I don't actually think that social networks are a good way to communicate with people. And um, the more that I've like brought my communication into like the real life, real world, and or like d directly communicated with people, like generally the better my social relation, my kind of social connections and relationships have been. Um, so I actually, I mean, I I, f I find social networking to be kind of a fad. And I think the fact that, you know, we seem to get a new social network that replaces the old one every, like, five to seven years is kind of a sign that there's something going on with that, you know. Um, make things that persist. Uh, you know, sites go down, uh, social networks, you know, they, 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 they just, it just keeps ticking down the stream and then it's gone, right? Uh, and it also fails, right? This is, oh my gosh. Have you guys ever been to this site? This is uh, Sean Baby's Hostess Pies page. You know what? The, have you seen this? This is amazing. It's like it's 15 years old, and it's so apparently they used to put like Hostess, like you know, Twinkie ads in the comic books in like the 80s, and so there's all these kind of really crazy, uh, you know, like yeah, it's like you know, S Captain America versus like the zombie thing, and they solve it by giving him like horrible fruit pie things with like <laughs> hydrogenated. God knows what in them. Uh, so this is a, this was an I loved the site. I mean, this is by the way rendering in ta this is tables. This isn't CSS. This is pre CSS, and it still renders perfectly. Um, you know, one of the things we've kind of learned from experience is that when we make like web platforms, like you know, like PHP forums and stuff like that, they tend to kind of age and die. But HTML has actually not really. I mean, it's it's definitely like in changed, but like old sites still render. Like you can go to some of the first websites ever made, and they still render in a browser. You know, uh, so HTML seems to be lasting a long time in terms of like being able to like continue to work. Whereas like a lot of PHP forums that people posted to 15 years ago, like if they'd posted this to you know a PHP forum 15 years ago, well, it's written in PHP two. It doesn't even run anymore. It's got like security problems. Uh, you know, the data, the computer, the server fails. They didn't back up the database. You know, there's just all these kind of problems with uh, persistence. Whereas with an a, a website, you just 
Like literally, backing up on NeoCities is one click. You click it, you get a zip ball of all of the files, and you're done. You can drop that anywhere else. You know, it's just it's just one click, one file starts thing of files. No databases. You don't have to be a Linux sysadmin to figure out how to do it. You know, it just works. I have to. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's trying to click on the iframe again. Uh, oh, and the Internet Archive backs it up. Um, I finally got a chance to go down to the Internet Archive last month. Um, they do a, so I don't know if this is like a secret or not, but if you're ever in San Francisco, uh, Friday lunch, go, go there. Like meet the Internet Archive people, they're amazing. They have this like giant temple that they've converted into like a temple of data. And uh, you can kind of walk around and there's, they've got these little like statues of like all the people that have ever worked at the Internet Archive. And uh, one of them is Aaron Schwartz, so it's kind of, you know, makes you stop for a bit. Um, they're literally, they've literally backed up the entire internet. I mean, like, <laughs> literally. Um, they have this thing called the Petabox that just goes through, spiders all of these sites, and then dumps them into an enormous data, uh, uh, data center that has all of the sites backed up. Um, you know, it, it, it just, organically, it's very easy to back up websites. It's not great, but it's, it's better than, you know, a database or Facebook or any of that stuff. Uh, make beautiful things. Uh, so this is the thing. Uh, the game has changed. It's not GeoCities anymore. It's not table layouts. Uh, look what you can make with HTML5 now. This is a NeoCities site, by the way, I framed in. And um, this is like a proper application. You know, it, it actually has, um, I think I'm up to this one now. Yeah, I watched that recently. OK. So that actually will persist. Uh, it's using local brow browser uh, session storage for it. It looks great. Uh, it looks better when it's not on a tiny screen that's rendered through a VGA adapter. But, um, but yeah, you can do things like filter. Yeah, so you can like filter for like specific episodes that have like the, the, the characters in it. I don't know if you, is, is this everybody know what the show is? It's like a, it's hard <laughs> to describe. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not the 80s one. It's the new one that's better. Anyway, uh, so you know, it's you can make amazing. This is a static HTML page. You know, this is a beautiful, well done, rendered, nice thing. You know, uh, this was somebody that put up just a f list of his favorite films, and it's actually they're really good. Uh, I kind of agree with most of them, uh, except for I can't really see it very well. Um, uh, I don't know about Bad Lieutenant, but anyway, sorry. <laughs> Uh, th somebody put this one up uh, a couple weeks ago. I have no idea what it's about. It's just, <laughs> it's just hilarious. I, I'm like visualizing somebody at some party he didn't like and just making this. Uh, it's like, the, uh, is that what this is? It's from a game called Hotline Miami. Oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have, okay. I'm totally watching a long play on, on YouTube of that later. So uh, I always feel emotional when I look at this page because it was like the first example of just like in the wild of Neo Cities, a little girl was obviously like learning to make her first website and um, teaching kids to code and especially like teaching little girls to code in a way that isn't, um, that just encourages them that they can do it is like always been something that, that's been really important to me and I was really excited to see that this is happening. Um, there are a lot more examples that we kept on seeing, and uh, I'll, at the end of the talk, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit more about what we're going to do to encourage this. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, the, the, one of the big, because, like, you know, what's the launch is just a web host. There's a lot of those. Um, the context is that all the web hosts out there are designed for business kind of businessy, kind of small business stuff, right? They're not designed for people just having fun and kind of playing around. Uh, that's what uh, we try to do with this. So one of the first things we did really early on was we started taking screenshots. Um, there's this program out there called PhantomJS, and it's the single greatest piece of software ever written. It lets us do things like program a web browser to load a site and take a screenshot of it. Uh, and so uh, we were actually able to take screenshots and put them on a browse page that lets people kind of search through uh, and look at the sites before they actually go to them, um, which was a huge, huge, I mean, that was, that's that been there since day one, so I mean, that, that was like a huge, huge thing. Uh, this was a thing we did recently, we actually just launched this in December, it's just having this notion of like, having an activity feed so you can kind of, instead of just programming a website on like Lonely Desert Island, 
you can actually kind of follow sites that you enjoy and then get a, get an update as to when they are updated. Um, you know, like I said, we're trying to make this a social network, but it, it, there was this context of like, we want to actually like, you know, if pe we want to make it so that people can actually know when sites get updated. So, that it, so it's not just you just go there and then you never go to the site again. Because uh, that was that was kind of a problem. Is is it's hard to kind of track when sites get updated. So um, we put in a browser HTML editor, uh, so you can actually. Uh, it, this is uh, I think it's the same thing that's on GitHub as Ace, and we've just basically juiced it up to run uh, a full kind of HTML. Uh, actually, you know, does JavaScript and stuff too, uh, in browser uh, text editor that just you know just goes straight into text. We don't have any WYSIWYG editors or whatever. Like we're, you know, it's just like point and click to instantly create a theme that has like a, you know, beach vacation background or whatever that you can just type in your business name into, which is like pretty much what all the other sites are doing. Um, <laughs> the idea is, is make a site, you know, like learn how to use HTML because it is how we express ourselves online now, you know, it is kind of the, the lowest common denominator. Um, oh, so we had problems. Oh, God. <laughs> we had a lot of problems. Um, we still have spam and SEO marketing. Actually, the biggest one is there was some pharmaceutical arbitrage for a while, uh, but that now it's mostly SEO stuff. Uh, you know, the, the way that uh, Google like computes page rank for sites is that they look at how many sites are linking to other sites, and so what they'll do is they'll like they have these like bot armies that will like somehow break through the captcha and put sites up on the cities just to you know, reference another random website. Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, it's actually pretty manageable. We've been able to take care of it with just some a pretty simple administration interface. I spend less than five minutes a day tops working on this. So it's not a big problem yet. Um, actually, the guy who used to work on spam at GeoCities works at the Internet Archive now and shared some war stories with me, which was kind of fun. And I mean, he looked like he'd been through a war. I mean, he was like, <laughs> they used to apparently have like millions of sites that had problems like that. Uh, viruses, uh, somebody figured out how to upload a virus into a, uh, apparent, so it's, it, if you take a, a GIF file and you put a zip file on the end of it, uh, if you load it in a web browser, it looks like a you know, picture of a cat or whatever, and then it has a zip file on the end, so if you load it into a zip file, an unzipper, it, it will extract files. So somebody used that to get around our uh, whitelist and uh, we're distributing viruses on the OCD, so that was very exciting. Uh, clam, clam AB for the technicals, uh, solved that problem, there's a way to do it. Uh, it's in our code, so you can see it. Uh, browser crash scripts, the memory, the JavaScript fork bomb was pretty fun. Uh, three lines of code, shut the entire server down. Um, haven't actually solved this problem yet, really, so please don't put JavaScript fork bombs on <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I actually have solved it, but what I did is I just basically set monitor on every second and check it, like a monitoring program that says, like, if it takes more than two gigs of memory or whatever, just kill it right away. Um, and that's, that's pretty much nicked the problem, so. Uh, legal threats, yeah, we've got some of those. Uh, you know, if you look at the transparency reports for like Reddit and stuff, uh, they actually get like 60 to 80 subpoenas a year on average. Um, you know, I think the kind of hotness to talk about right now is uh, gag order subpoenas. Uh, but actually, the bigger problem, and it's a way bigger problem, is subpoena, like kind of really bad subpoenas issued by regional governments. Um, so, for, you know, and which have like fake gag orders in them because legally they can't, almost no. A grand jury can issue a real gag order on a subpoena, um, and uh, but they'll they'll put the text in it anyway, right? To be able just to you know scare you into not disclosing that you received a subpoena. Uh, so we've gotten a few of those. Um, can't really get into the details, unfortunately. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, so. Legal, oh, uh, liability insurance. Uh, this is a thing I learned about uh, from somebody at the EFF down in Oakland. Uh, you can get, uh, it's about $100 a month, you get liability insurance, comes with a deductible, and then if you ever do get sued for some third-party content, uh, you, you, you're covered, right? Because if you get sued, it could be a million-dollar lawsuit, right? I mean, just, just expenses. Uh, the law defends you as a service provider. Uh, you, it says you, you are not liable for content that's hosted on your site. And it's pretty much the only reason that all the sites exist. Uh, literally. Like, YouTube wouldn't exist, uh, Twitter wouldn't exist. You know, for God's sakes, ISIS publishes crap on Twitter. Yeah. You know, like, 
uh, and so this law, I mean, it protects you, but it doesn't protect you from somebody filing a frivolous lawsuit and costing you $300,000 to defend it. So if you're running a site that has any serious amount of uh, third-party activity on it, uh, liability insurance, it's 100 bucks a month. It's worth it. Um, it took a lot of work and we solved it. So that's the thing. We were able to, we haven't had a problem where we said, okay, that's it. We tried to do this. Um, oh yeah, uh, there was this too. Uh, at one point the site on US City shut down the president of Mexico's website. Literally. It was, a, it was an anonymous, uh, anonymous Mexico. They had had a presidential election and apparently they didn't like the new camp, the, the, the uh, person that won the election. Uh, I, you know, I get an email from the federales, literally the Mexican federal police. They're like, you're, you're, you're DDoSing a president of Mexico's website, it's down. And like, I, I check my bandwidth logs, nothing on it. I go here, it's a jQuery script that just bangs on their server. And that's it. It was 50 lines of code, took down president of Mexico's website. <laughs> that was really funny, I actually, I, I just, I, yeah, I just told them to go to GitHub, so. <laughs> Uh, next steps, more media attention. Uh, again, the anachronism thing is a big problem. The, you're just a nostalgia portal is a big problem. You need to change the perception that um, you need to change the perception. Oh, oops, oops. Change the perception that we're an old idea. Like we want to bring back the idea of creating websites. Right? We think that this is a way to make sites that you can truly express yourselves and stay around a long time. Uh, you know, don't become obsolete. Uh, Case current revenue, uh, we're not making enough to break even on our living expenses right now, so that's a, that's fine. Uh, and keep working, you know, just pretty general stuff. Uh, oh, and quickly, make them stay up forever. We're working, at, we're working with this really interesting group down in uh, Palo Alto uh, called uh, Protocol Labs. They're working on this thing called IPFS. Uh, it's essentially a uh, permanent decentralized peer-to-peer -peer web. Uh, this is, and I and I and I say, and I understand how substantial this sounds. Uh, it is a proposal to replace HTTP with a distributed web to, uh, protocol. This is a huge, huge thing, and it actually might work. Um, all the idea would be that all the sites in NeoCities would be federatable. Um, this is a, I'm putting out a blog post in a couple of days on the NeoCities blog that's going to really go into this because we've got eight minutes left, and I could probably spend four hours on this talk, just talking about IPFS itself. Um, but it is a way to basically turn, it, it makes it so that anyone can host a site on NeoCities, and using cryptography, you can guarantee that, that, that even if you don't trust that node, that you're getting the right information. Uh, it is really, really, really powerful, really interesting stuff. I think it should replace HTTP, so, um, and I think it might. So you should take a look at this. This is pretty, pretty edgy stuff. Uh, OK. Um, so here's an upcoming project that I'm really excited about um, that I've been wanting to do since I first started working in tech. So going back to Why Lucky Stiff, who we quoted in the beginning of the talk, uh, I was always really inspired by Why Poignant Guide to Ruby, which was his really uh, whimsical and kind of bizarre um, tutorial for learning Ruby that had all these comics and things, and I thought that was an amazing idea. Uh, and he also made tryruby.org, which was this completely interactive tutorial. You just go in there and start typing things, and it like just takes you step by step through uh, all the basic first things you need to know about Ruby. Um, and so when I designed this mascot, one of the things I was thinking is like, oh, I could make my version of Poignant Guide to Ruby, except it could be like the most awesome HTML tutorial ever that combines that like interactive uh, lesson idea. Um, so here's like um, an initial mock-up I made of like the kind of ideas that I want to do here. Like there would be some little story. It would be a lot less ab abstract than why the Lucky Stiff stories. It would just be pretty straightforward and it would teach you uh, what to do and you could type it in on the right side there and uh, when you click save it would uh, immediately tell you if you did it right or it would just proceed with the lesson um, if you did it correctly. And it, would, it would also um, immediately upload your results to your NeoCities site so that like you could immediately like share it with friends. You could like just from the beginning you could be actually making making your own personal website and this isn't this doesn't have to be like just like some impersonal like example website that you're working on. 
Uh, so Please don't put JavaScript <laughs> pork bombs in it. Yeah. Um, so today we are launching this Kickstarter to try to fund this uh, course because like we currently make very little money with NeoCities. It's sort of, we have like this premium plan, uh, but we're hoping to try this now. Um, yeah, the, the investors, uh, the, 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 only, the, the only thing the investors like less than philanthropy is uh, an open source project, so. <laughs> uh, but that's, you know. It's like that. It's advertising is the hype, right? I mean, if we if we did advertising, we'd get investment right away, but we don't want to do advertising. We think it's a dead model. So, you know, so some someday maybe the VCs will get less conservative and start saying like, oh yeah, you're right. But I think the craziness needs to kind of wash out of the system that we have right now before that real, realization happens. But anyway, so we're doing a Kickstarter uh, to see if we can be uh, completely grassroots and community driven. So um, yeah, if 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 you. Uh, if, if anyone wants to support us, please do. And, ple and, and again with the fork bombs, please don't. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is what we're trying to do. And um, it's a lot of big question marks uh, kind of rolled into one giant, like larger Tamagotchi-like question mark. Uh, so um, you know, it's an experiment. We're going to try it. Uh, we're going to define it. And we're going to see if we can make it work. And hopefully, uh, we can bring back the lost art of people making creati be being creative on the web again. So uh, that's the hope. And uh, we're done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>